Welcome to our Gardens of the Moon live show. Um, me and Kyle are I have doing the better cover, a read along this year. What is that cover? I've never it's seen nice. that one. Yeah, hold on. Oh, I like it. Yeah. I've only ever seen this one or the um, tower one. Yeah. That's on the thumbnail. Um, we are buddy reading all of the malls on books this year. Well, maybe not all of them, but we're going to attempt to get through as many as possible. And we just read Gardens of the Moon. We are super uh, newbies, uh, not in the know. So you can help us to be in the know. Anyway, Kyle, I realize you should probably introduce yourself just in case. Hello, on everybody. My channel bench, but... I'm Kyle from Read by Kyle. Uh, I am ostensibly a book booktuber, but I don't make videos right now. But I do appear on live chats where I talk about books because that's my favorite thing. So yeah, I'm excited to be here. You're just like a permanent live chatter now. Like yeah. your your yeah. job is just to go on other people's <laughs> channels. Yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, let's get into Gardens of the Moon. As a warning to everyone, we're probably going to do like a few minutes of non-spoiler chat, but for the most part, this will be a spoiler live stream. So um, we're going to comment on that. Yeah, I was just saying, people in the comments... Um, please don't like be like, oh, uh, if you like this character, wait till book five when they get tons more. Like, you know, I, I, I don't want any of that. Please just like don't do that. But yeah, don't that, let us know when the characters are coming back. I agree on yeah. that. Um, Philip is here, though. Hi, Philip. I'm glad hey, you're Phillip. here. Hey, you're Joanna. The hey, Gavin. Hey, Matt. You can hey, help Rhett. us. Hello. Yeah, everyone. Gavin's up at like 2 a.m. Thank you. Um. So to start out, I think we wanted to talk about our expectations going in because we had different expectations going in. Like you and I did? Yeah. yeah. Do you not think that? Um, I don't know. Why don't you tell me what your expectations were? Well, it's just because I had read Gardens of the Moon before. Oh, that's So I feel true, like right? that, yeah. that's like automatically like a different expectation. My memories of Gardens of the Moon were that I liked it, but I thought I was too stupid. And so now I was like, well, if I liked it then... I'm probably just going to like it more now. And that ended mm -hmm. up being a correct expectation, I feel like. It was less dark than I expected because everyone always says how dark Malazan is. And I was like, maybe I just don't remember. But it's not it's not dark yet, I don't think. Yeah, I, I thought it was surprisingly not dark. Like there was like dark things happening, but I felt like it pulled back quite a bit um, or like faded yeah. to black. Um, I'm sure the there's some more stuff coming up. But um, yeah, so my expectations were just that like I, I've heard a lot about the series and that's that's really hard going into a series where you've heard so much like what I read like Name of the Wind like I'd heard so much about it that it really sets you up for a certain style of expectations um, and a lot of people say Malazan is really really confusing but then there's a whole other group of people that are like honestly you could follow it you just won't get everything uh, to start with but like the main story is totally fine um, and that's what my experience was like I don't think that I honestly didn't think it was that hard to follow. There was definitely things I didn't understand, but I was just like, okay, with not knowing where those things went. Like, I'm like, I don't really understand the magic that well yet and, and stuff like that. But I'm just like, you know, eventually it'll all make sense. And so I, I found that it was very enjoyable. I really liked it. Um, it was wa way more readable than I thought it would be. And Did the we both give it 4.5 stars. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So we're in total agreement. Yeah. Yeah. But a 4.5 from you is a bigger deal than a 4.5 from me. That is true. A four point yeah. five for me. Is you, a big I think deal. you liked. I think it's fair to say you liked the book more than I did, but not by like a ton. Yeah, yeah. I, people, someone commented on my Instagram like, "Really not five stars," and I was like, "You don't understand. I don't give five stars very often." So four point five is like a solid rating. Um. Yeah, I think what I thought is, I think initially in my first read, which was a decade ago, when it switched POVs to a whole new set of characters, that's when I really got thrown off as a new adult fantasy reader. I was like, are you kidding me? I just spent like 200 pages and I finally feel like I know those characters. And now I'm going to spend 300 pages with completely new cast. And this time that didn't throw me at all. I feel like that's mm -hmm. pretty normal. So that was like a big change for me. Yeah. Um, I actually was going to say this at the very beginning. Uh, Bookborn and I read this over a month ago now, and it just took a while to get this scheduled. Um, so some of our, I'll speak for myself. Some of my memory might not be, uh, oh. that great, but the only thing I've done since reading it is I read the Wikipedia summary, like last week, just to make sure I remember like the order of events. And I listened to the first two episodes of 10 very big books, 
uh, where like one of the people had never read fantasy books and her like expectations for everything were just wildly different than how I read fantasy. And it really helped mm -hmm. me see like experience in fantasy really matters in, in your expectations for how a book should go. Because yeah, when we switched characters, it just like didn't phase me at all. I was just like, yeah, that's, that's just what you do. Yeah, it's just so funny because I did read it as well. I, I was an experienced fantasy reader, but an experienced YA fantasy reader, mm -hmm. which is like a very different thing. And so it's it's very interesting, like how confusing I thought it was. And then to read it this time and be like, this is just fine. Like this yeah. just isn't, it's not anything. So that was an interesting experience. Um, I think the other thing we really have to bring up is apparently there's no wrong pronunciation for Malazan except my pronunciation. Is You're, what I it's it's exclusively terrible, I think. Like, <laughs> I don't know how you managed to make those vowels, make those sounds in that order of events. Like, uh, So the accepted <laughs> ones apparently are Malazan? Um, well, if you talk to Philip, I believe he will say, from the, from the continent of Malaz. Uh, so it's Malazan. Uh, but I say Malazan. And those are the main two that I've heard. What do you say? Malazan. Malazan. So I just put the emphasis on the mall instead of the zone. Yeah. So mall is on. Um, yeah, it's funny because people were so nice about it. Because like I'm used to like the Cosmere people being like extremely rude to me. And it feels like the uh, mall is on readers are desperate for new people. So they're like, well, we're not going to be rude. But we are going to point out that that is unique. <laughs> and yeah. like it's not wrong, but it is wrong. Um yeah, Malazan. I don't know. I could try to change Malazan. I mean, mm. You know, it's a unique, it's a unique you thing. Like you, you just do you. You know, you'll start um, a new, a third branch of talking about it. What a! It sounds like I'm mumbling it, Malazan. Yeah, I don't know. Here we go. Hard J's. Yeah, we talked about that today. I've switched okay, okay. over, but I did say hard J when I read the books. Yeah, and here's the thing: I was a Sanderson fan for like a decade before I got on to YouTube. So no one corrected me for 10 years. At this point, it is what it is. Um, this is what I've noticed so far. Me too. Yeah. Um, in the comments, people are so excited. People do not care if you get something wrong. They're just like so nice about it, telling you resources. It's very pleasant. Um, I've been enjoying the fandom quite a bit. I hope it stays this way. Just wait till we both hate a popular character or something. And then. <laughs> yeah. I, and it, it's interesting because I mean, we can jump in um, to spoilers and characters now. Um, I wasn't sure. Like that's one fun thing. I, I don't have a lot of knowledge of models on. Like you said, you did. I don't still like, I'm not in those, you know, I'm never online, you know, all the stuff I know nothing. So I, I, when I made that video, I actually didn't know if the characters I liked were normal to like. Like they could mm -hmm. be, I didn't know. So I was surprised that Lorne is such a love character. I wasn't sure I really liked yeah. Lorne, but it surprised me how people are, how many people were like, no, that's normal. Everyone loves Lorne. So that was a surprise for me. I really liked her too. I don't know that much about characters people like. I know people really like Whiskey Jack and I know people really like Anamanda Rake. Um, and apart from that, I just kind of know names, but I don't know like what people think of them and stuff. Like, like I know Karsa is a big deal. Like everybody, he's an important Who character later on. Who is your but... favorite character? Oh, uh, that's tough. Mine was Tattersail. It's probably Tattersail. Um, yeah. I also really like Perrin. Perron. Gone, gone, oh. gone with the Wind. I don't know how to say his name. Gone, gone as, yeah, I think I said Perrin. Perrin. Yeah, I said Perrin. Okay, yeah. Perrin. Yeah, no, he was really I was, When but, you said that, I was thinking like P-E-R-R-I-N. I got confused, but yeah, P-A-R-A-N. Yeah. Okay. Um, there wasn't really a character I didn't like. Like, I think that was a really, is it like across the board, I liked all the characters. Kruppa was a little much for me. Uh, but by the end, I kind of came around on him. Oh, he, I do love Anna Manor Rake. Yeah, but I just like, I mean, that just seems like the basic answer. It's like, you know. Yeah, I, Rake awesome. actually didn't end up making my top five characters, which I think surprised a lot of people. Um, but not because I didn't like him. I thought he was super cool. It's just that you're not in Anna Manda Rake's head. So I feel like it's easier for me to connect to characters that I'm in their head. Um. Oh, Crocus. Crocus, yeah. I think Crocus. Uh, was I didn't the like only Crocus that had, much. We, yeah, yeah, we didn't like Crocus. Yeah, you know, but it's not again. It's not like I disliked him or thought he was poorly written. I just thought there was way cooler people around him, and he was just kind of like, like a little whiny. 
Um, this is a good Very. question. Um, I was going to say Crocus. The one thing I'll say about Crocus, and I want to get this out because I think Erickson did a good job with Crocus. And I remember telling you this is that Crocus is that typical teenage boy character who's like really girl obsessed. And Erickson did it in a way that wasn't completely gross, which yeah. I really appreciate. Like it was a perfect, like I got that he was like the teenage boy, but it wasn't gross. And I think that was, he did a good job with that. Um, how I surprised agree. were we about the inclusion of puppets? Um, I was extremely I, surprised. I, I thought it was really cool. Line. Yeah, me too. It's terrifying. That is like, it's straight up horror when he's in the marionette with the frozen face. I know. And I, I, I just don't know what to make of Hairlock. Like, I just don't know what his motivations are or like, like, is he, is he on quick Ben and Callum's and, and the bridge burner side still, or is he doing his own game? He's definitely I don't know. He's doing his own thing. He's I like, think he's doing his own thing, but like, it also seems like they're like kind of working together until like the stuff near the end there. Like, I don't know. I don't know what to make of him yet. I don't, I do not know what I think of Hairlock, but I do know him as a puppet is really cool. Quick Ben though, was like more trying to keep him under control. So I feel like yeah. that implied that Hairlock was something to be feared and reckoned with. Um, how so Oh yeah. We talked about the puppets. So yeah, that was, um, it was funny because I barely remembered anything because it had been a decade and it was one of those, that was one of those moments that right before I got to it, it was like deja vu. I was like, oh yeah, he's in a puppet. Like, <laughs> I was like, I for, how did I forget that? Like, that was weird. Um, I had to read it twice. I was like, what? he's a puppet now? Like, I must have missed something. There actually wasn't that much I had to reread twice. It was only like the end. I still don't know what happened at the end. That's like the only part I'm like really confused about. Um, yes. The and then end, when, I'm, I'm not sure what happened. When Seraphin, um, What's Rake's lieutenant's name? It's like Seraphin or Seraphi, some something like that. that sure. When she's fighting uh Raced, the the Jagonaut. Yeah. Um I was kind of confused at that first. And then when I reread it, it made sense. But yeah, I, I had to ask Gavin actually about um like Perrin and the um and the god and like Battle giving Trump. up the sword. I was just like, I don't understand the motivations in this scene. And so that, once it was explained to me, that was the only part that I was just like, I don't, I'm worried I missed something about this. This, this is actually an excellent point to like talk about expectations and like, because um, like that part, I was just like, I will definitely know this later. Like this will, like, I just feel like this God will come, like Shadow Thrones motivations will be fleshed out later. So I didn't even consider it. But I did feel really confused during like the the party when they were fighting, and then there's like that random magic that happens to like like I don't really understand what happened with Raced, and that was where I was like, should I be understanding this more? And it's just like different what like a different reader may expect to be like what they should already you know, know what they are going to get explanations for later. I think my big thing was that like the whole Opon or Oppen, whatever the the twin Opon? gods, yeah. Um, that was a storyline that was like my favorite. I love when they play with luck. Like Matt's storyline was one of my favorites in Wheel of Times. Like I just love the luck storyline. So that even though Crocus wasn't my favorite character, like I loved his that whole thing. And so mm -hmm. I was very concerned about the sword. I was just like, well, the sword's gonna be given up, and then that person's gonna be in Open's hand. But then like the twins were afraid. So do you mean the I coin? I think it was more that I was curious about it. What? Do you mean the coin? He's the coin well, bearer? The, the coin sword holder? as well. The sword also was a lot oh, thing. Okay. I I sorry. I was I was already attached to the coin. I oh sorry. Yeah, I'm just saying like yeah. those yeah. storylines yeah. of where open was and stuff. Yeah. Was just like my personal favorite and most interesting thing. And so yeah, I was also this I had to read a couple of times. Those are like probably the paragraphs where I was like, oh, I have to like I don't know what that happened. is. So <laughs> maybe I was confused, or maybe like what is that part? Is, uh, hopefully I'm right. This is the part at the end where like they're in the forest. P Pyron is and um, no, not Pyron. Yes, Pyron. Okay. And Whiskey Jack and like that thing starts growing and they make. Oh, um, yeah, that's Colin the exact go. part. I, that's the exact part. I didn't understand what was happening. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. I had to read those paragraphs several times. And then at the end I was like, well, if it's important, hopefully it'll come back. <laughs> Somehow Palpatine returned. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah like, okay, <laughs> fine. Um, um, I'm going to out bookboard here a little bit, um, oh, no. because Philip said, plus Rake showing up in a dragon mask. Uh, 
Hillary did not care that um, he was a dragon. That's what oh, she told yeah. me. Yeah. How dare you? How dare you? <laughs> well, you were like, oh my gosh, he's a dragon. Wasn't that so cool? And I was like, yeah. I, I had, yeah, no, that's I so had cool. no emotion towards that. <laughs> like, cool, he's a dragon. Do now. you at least think his sword is cool? I think his sword is very cool. Okay. I'll I'll accept that begrudgingly. But the thing is that I'm more of a sword person than a dragon person. I have never just like super been into dragons. It's just like not something that is like super interesting to me. Like when everyone's like fantasy needs more dragons. I'm like, does it though? Like, <laughs> haven't we done that? Like, that's like Patrick's video where he had all these people saying why they like fantasy. And like half of them are like, and dragons are cool. And you're just not there. I'm just not, I'm not <laughs> there. Like I'm not there. And um, like, it was cool. It's just, if you asked me like, Oh, what were your moments in the book that there's no way that would make a top 10. Yeah. And that's fair. That was it. Okay, I lost a comment. Um, yeah, I people are lively cards. tonight. It's awesome. People are lively. Um, the fact that Philip that doesn't understand wrong. the Azath makes me feel a lot better. If Philip oh, doesn't good. understand it, we're good. Yeah, if Philip doesn't get it, then <laughs> we'll never get it. So, like, it's great. I won't worry about it. But, I mean, that is, I did actually like that a lot about the book. Magic is totally wild in Gardens of the Moon. It is just, like, yes bonkers and because it's so bonkers no one feels necessarily overpowered or underpowered like everyone has magic it's all bonkers you'll never know what to expect and um i tend to read a lot of hard magic so it was kind of fun that it was just like such a wild magic system you know, i read after finishing the book because i really liked it i went and i read some more like negative reviews of it and um you know, some of them I just don't agree with at all. But one of them that I actually do agree with that I think I would have had a lot more problems with had I just picked up Gardens of the Moon without any knowledge that this was like a really well-beloved series is the fact that the magic just sometimes comes out of nowhere. And people are just like, mm -hmm. oh, now just new explosions and, and new magics you don't know about. Um, I typically don't like that. And if I think if I just picked up a book and I was maybe like, wow, there's like, oh, he just got out of that. Just, uh, do I not going to... Do ex machina. I'm I'm not into it, but I have a lot of trust in Steven Erickson just because all the people that I know that really like him are like, okay, he's really thought this through. It's gonna, you know, things are gonna come back. So I, I gave it a lot of leeway that way. So I didn't even consider that as being a negative while reading. I was just like, yeah, okay, we have a new magic. Let's go. I don't know what's going on, but I'm here for it. And so it's interesting how that worked. I definitely think that's one where the expectations helped me out a lot because my expectation going into this is I was like, I'm. I'm not going to worry about anything. Like that was what I told myself. Like I am not yeah. going to worry about anything. I am just going to read this book and take it page by page. And so that expectation helped. And like, so I do think mm -hmm. you said like, maybe if you pick the book up randomly, although I don't remember having a problem with it when I read it 10 years ago, I, I remember just being like, I just don't understand everything that happened. Um, yeah. So I don't know. Let's see. We can talk about croup. We already kind of talked about croup. Oh, how do you guys pronounce that? Uh, well, the audio book says Krepa. And the Krupa. only reason I kind of like Kruppa is because the audiobook is just 11 out of 10 with Kruppa. Like, just Krupa. literally, he's like, he's like, oh, Kruppa. Like, I he's just so extra. It's insane. Said, it is so good. It's fine. Yeah, like, I think I think I would have said Kroop, too, if I didn't hear the, um, the audiobook. Here's the thing about Kroop. Uh, very annoying at first. Uh, some of the most interesting chapters, though. Yes. And one one interesting thing I actually found about Malzahn was that unlike some other series that I really like, there was no viewpoint I was dreading. Like there's always like, even like Stormlight Archive is my favorite series of all time. There are some of those books where you're like, mm, another Shalon chapter. Okay, when are we getting back to Kaladin? But I never yeah. felt that. I never felt that. I was like every character, something wild was happening. So I was interested. Yeah, I agree. I, I was never bored. I never really liked the book um and i was trying to keep pace with you because regardless of what alan says i do take buddy read seriously unless it's with alan and um i didn't want to just like you know pass you and we were both kind of in like reading slumps but i kept wanting to only read that and i was like well i have other books that i could read but I'm like no i want to read gardens of the moon so i think that's a big testament to how much i was enjoying it and it is funny because like it did take me a long time to read crap. but it wasn't because i was enjoying it oh crap Well, that's better. Yeah, like you know, audiobooks not checking with the author on how they pronounce things is disastrous, but, you know, it's fine. Um, 
yeah, I, I always, I was really enjoying it. It's just like a book that's dense and just takes a long time to get through, but it wasn't like, I never dreaded picking it up. I always wanted to, mm -hmm. um, I know he gave you, we, he yeah, gave he gave you, you credit, credit. Alan. You're just, you're well, just credit. trying to be he's mad. About something. It's cause he's 20 K Philip. Anyway. Um, um, one thing about Krupp though, I did call, I was very proud of myself. Not that this was that big of a mystery, but I did sorry, call Alan, him. Sorry, Alan, here, here you go. Anyway, I'm sorry. What was your big mystery? Uh, no, but I called that Krupp was the eel. Like I, I got that, like, Oh Way yeah, I did too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, mm -hmm. You start you, once. Once I caught on pretty quickly that his whole thing was a put on, then it made his character a lot more manageable. For yeah, me. like I when I first met yeah. him, I was like, ugh. But then it was, you know, it's only like a few chapters. Like, oh, I get it. This is like yeah. a, a persona, and then it's then I like it a lot more. Um, I really liked his stuff with the old god whose name I don't remember. Um, in his dream, uh, K something. Yeah, I want to yeah. say Kale because I'm reading a book with a guy named Kale, but it's not Kale. Was but like I know who you're talking about. Something? Anyway, yeah. Um, I I love the whole concept of like the gods are very present in Malazan. You get to see them, and it depends on who believes in them. Like I've always really liked that, so I'm excited, yeah. hopefully, to see more of that. It reminds me of like American gods and like Daniel oh, Dynasty. Really I said Kalul. It's Karul. I was close. oh Karul. Nice. That was close. See, I had the K, and then I blanked after. Um, so yeah, that was one of my favorite storylines. And I don't know, do we see that more in Dead House Gates? Let's, let's let the, uh, the gallery, uh, tell us. Yeah. Yeah. I don't mind you guys telling us like some stuff that's in Dead House Gates. Cause we're reading it next. I just don't want to know like what's way later. Um, and here's my actual guess. Just yesterday. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to crack this open right after we get off. What's here. your, is your cover the same as mine? Oh uh, yeah, it is. Oh, speaking of covers, sorry, this is random. I, I have to know if anyone knows in the comments. So while I was looking for this cover to make a thumbnail, there's a version where there's a woman here. And then there's a version where there's no woman. So like, what's the story oh, of the woman being there and the woman not being there? Have you seen that? If you Google Gardens of the Moon cover, there's one where the woman's there. And it's weird. It might yeah. be like an international cover. Like sometimes they change them just a little bit. Yeah, that was that was like it was like did she get taken off? I don't know. Um, okay, I didn't take the um, bait. Oh, what bait? Was he was he was hate, he was saying MCU is like the Cosmere in a negative way. Oh, oh, I didn't. Jimmy see is it. really taking a page out of Alan's book to try and yeah. rile during live shows. Um, I don't get riled during live shows. It's fine. Okay, I was actually going to use your useful comment, Jimmy, instead of unuseful. Oh, um, did it? He asked, did it feel like an RPG? But I somehow lost the comment. It was Jordan up there somewhere. Um, I, I definitely noticed some like RPG vibes for sure. Um, you can definitely tell, especially like I don't know if you know this, um, but like Gardens of the Moon specifically was like made as a script first, and you can totally tell. At least I could totally tell. Mm -hmm. It felt like a script, and it then been like put into a novel. Like it, it has a, a flow that's more like scripty. Like I don't know. Like it just like. It has like a chunk and then like it fades into a new chunk. And like, there's not a lot of like, like a tissue. Yeah. I um, didn't actually think of RPG, but the second you've said that now, Jordan, yes, it does. It does feel like all those characters are characters people just chose and are like rolling with. So that's actually a very good uh, comparison. Jimmy's comment um, at the bottom is a good one. That was something that I wanted to talk about. Yeah, I mean, this is, I think this came up with um, Crocus and how he was handled. Um, I was super surprised by how gender neutral Erickson is yeah. in the entire novel. The assassins, the spies, the leaders are all likely to be women as just as much as men. And even his characters have that expectation because even Crocus, the like dumb teenage boy is like I is basically like oh that assassin tried to kill him. he tried to kill me well it could have actually it may it might have been she like he has that inner dialogue yeah. um and like yeah it's not even like like it's it's occasionally remarked upon but just as like a fact of life like it's not like this is a woman doing it. like it's just you know and that the empress is a woman obviously like she's like the most terrifying person in the land yeah and um yeah it was really interesting and I I thought gardens was written a little earlier than it actually was for some reason i thought it was closer to 
Wheel of Time's inception in 1990 and it's not until 1999. But even still for like this era of male driven fantasy, really surprising, um, pleasantly, pleasantly surprised by it. And it did Jimmy stand out to me, actually. I noticed it almost right away, like very early on. Mm-hmm. Um, and even I think it's why I like Tattersail so much. Um, she He also doesn't like do that dumb thing that happens a lot where like the strong female character has to be perfect or not afraid or like Tattersail is such a fascinating character because she is so respected and strong, but it's sort of like an emotional mess, like yeah. very in turmoil. And that's why I liked her. Like she felt like a real character. Um, so I've, Speaking I hope that of continues. which, the scene, the dinner scene was excellent with like Lauren uh, and, and talk and uh, Tattersail. And I don't remember if it's Dujek or Whis- or I think it's Dujek that's there. But where Lauren accuses Tattersail of uh, killing her family and stuff. Oh. Yeah, I, that I was did. an excellent scene. Oh, the dinner scene's amazing. And apparently Philip has a video on it. And I looked for it and I couldn't find it. So Philip, yeah, I couldn't find it either. Link. I specifically Googled Philip <laughs> Chase Lauren and then dinner scene. And I couldn't find it. So Philip, yes, I did too. And then out. I went through his like Erickson playlist and I couldn't yeah. find it. So Philip sent us because I want to watch a video on that scene because I loved it. And um one of the things that oh here we go that's an interesting bit of trivia so it, oh, it, that's probably that. why it feels that way it feels very 1990 but except that it's um very progressive like i was just surprised reading it um how progressive it was <laughs> so, i mean yeah um um let's see Oh, it's called morality. Okay, so I wondered if that was the one. I was just expecting it for me just to be like dinner scene. Apparently. Yeah, we're I too basic for Philip. <laughs> we're not. We we're not smart enough to, I guess, read between the lines. Um, the uh, yeah, I, that was one interesting scene because I I both liked Lauren and Tattersale, and now they're set up as yeah, and to antagonists. Um, you know, which I really liked that in general. Just like. When we think about it, I mean, it's getting a little more, more common with like the rise of like grimdark and stuff like that. But just like how we're seeing conflicts from both sides, but mm-hmm. like empathizing with both. Like, again, I think for the time it was written, uh, I don't think that was very common. And, you know, we follow the bridge burners first and then they're like told to go conquer Daruzistan. And then you get the people in Daruzistan. And then now you're like, oh, well, these are also like our it, it feels like they are treated like equally main characters and like they are. And so. These people are in direct conflict, and that's the same with Tattersale and Lauren. Uh, I think the only person that you know we aren't on the side of at all is like Tayshrin, because I don't like. Yeah, him she at all. seems like a bad person. Isn't and it? And maybe like Harlock. Harlock. I'm like suspicious of Harlock too. So. Oh yeah, I don't know about Harlock, but <laughs> is Tayshrin a man or a woman? I thought it was a man. Tayshrin. The high mage. Oh, that, the that high kills... mage. For some reason, I was thinking of um, the Empress. Oh, I, no, that's Lacine. Yeah, no, I'm not on Tayshia's yeah, side either. Yeah, yeah um, I don't know. I, we don't have enough information about Lacine. She seems sketchy, but maybe Lacine. it's just because she's oh, yeah, an I empress. Yeah, I got those names confused. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think, um, yeah, there's a um, recentness that feels to Gardens of the Moon in the same way I feel that way when I read Pratchett's works, where it there's a little bit of a timelessness in there. Like, oh, how is this so relevant still? Um, and I find that very fascinating, um, considering when it was written, I think it's weird. Malzahn tends to get lumped in with a lot of nineties fantasy, but it felt very different to me. Um, I'm very surprised and not surprised it was written in 1990. Like it makes perfect sense, but I also like, it's just even more surprising to me. No, no, Philip, we'll work on our reading comprehension. Don't change. Morality in Malazan is a great title. I just didn't know that that was what it was referring to. It's a perfect to. title. We just yeah. You just have to understand, someone kept telling us, watch the dinner scene video. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, the idea was that it must be just, like, a dinner scene video. Um, let's see. Yeah. And, and I think it's also one of those books that is um, showing the people not in charge because those that's the reality, right? The people not in charge are usually the ones being punished for mm-hmm. everyone else's decisions. Um, and I think it did a good job. Yes. 
Harlock did get torn up by one of the hounds. Did we decide I mean, that he might not? I'm there's no way. Like, come on. He's That's fine. how I he's feel. A, he's a puppet. Like, I'm not gonna be like, well, this puppet got ripped apart by hounds. That's <laughs> we're closing the book he, on this guy. <laughs> he's incapacitated, is my opinion, yeah. but not out of the I don't of the think picture. talk is dead either. I, I think for sure talk is still around. You think talk is still around? Yeah, for sure. I'm like I I'm like 90% certain. sure. What? I was less certain about talk. Well, I, maybe um, I'm wrong, but I it just I don't know. I just felt like he had some more stuff to do. And then like his dad was yeah. mentioned, like, I don't know. It could have just been a misdirect, but I just feel like it just felt very much like something that happened in wheel of time too. Yeah. You heard it okay. here first. Steven Erickson stealing from Robert Jordan. <laughs> the, the, um, <laughs> the, the thing is those, is we might not see some of these characters for like books for all I know. Like the one thing I expect is like, we'll just get completely new characters in dead house gates and maybe just see someone in the, in the thing. Maybe. Um, I did not catch this, but that makes a lot of sense to me now that I get it. Um, I feel like the RPG thing is, well, I get it now. Thanks for telling yeah. me. Um, speaking of that, though, we, we talked about Krupp and we talked about Crocus, but overall, what did you think of the Darugistan plotline? I just want to say, yes, we are both first-time readers to Tom, just so he knows why we might not know anything. We've only read Gardens of the Moon. Yeah. To be clear. Um, they said Philip, but. Yeah, there were several people that specifically we'll said We'll watch Phillip. both. <laughs> yeah. um, what do you mean by the plot line? Like just the whole section or a specific part? Yeah, I mean. I'm like, not going to say the city name. You know, I'm not going to. Oh, please. So just the city. Darugistan. I'm not going to say it. And then there's um, I've immediately given up. Oh, oh, we didn't talk about pale. Okay, we have to talk about the siege of pale too, but Jerusalem first. Like, just like because we because it's kind of jarring when you think about it. You you get like all the stuff with the bridge burners, and we get really invested in Tattersale, and then we switch over to Jerusalem, and we get Krupp and his theatrics, (laughs) and we get you know Crocus breaking into a young woman's yeah rooftop hopping, and then we get Ralic being a badass. Actually. Ralic is one of my favorite characters. I really liked Ralic was in my top five. Yeah. Um, I cheated. I think I did a top seven. I had like three A, B, and C. Um, <laughs> I mean, I really liked it. I At first it was jarring because I was so invested in Whiskey Jack and Tattersail. Like I was liking them so much that at first I was like, hmm. But I really liked the assassin chase scene and the coin. That whole thing was very tongue in cheek. I liked it. I mean, I was... I became equally invested, I will say. Yeah. In that yeah, I think he did a great movie. job of like making them equal storylines. Also, like in the, the rooftop scene, um, where you follow the one character and then they get killed and you're just like, Oh, we're not we're not always following these people. Like yes. I, I feel like I had kind of gotten into a rhythm where it's like we're following the people that are gonna be the players, and then it was just like nope. Not this guy. So that's one of my favorite subversions. Like there's a few books I know that do that. I love that when you're following a character and then they just die and you're like, oh, okay, cool. Um, I just always love that. Gives it a sense. Psycho stuff. The Siege of Pale, pronounce it as Pale? Excuse you, no, it's Pale. P-A-L-E, right? It has to be Pale. I've even heard like Philip say Pale, I think. Like I'm sticking with Pale. (laughs) um are we talking about like at the very like at the beginning when Yeah, chapter two yeah okay um that's what everybody talks about that's like the thing that's like they're like the siege of pale yeah i mean it it was it was fine like am i I supposed to okay listen the other day in jimmy's discord i don't know if jimmy's still here i was literally like yeah i mean the siege of pale is fine and everybody attacked me they're like the siege of pale is amazing there's so much stuff going on it's so cool and I was like, did I just not understand it? So I went back and reread it. And I was like, yeah, it's like fine. Like it's it's fine. Here's what it is. You know, I bet I bet you anything. You know what the Siege of Pale is? It's the prologue to the Wheel of Time, which is that all the intense Wheel of Time fans are like, the prologue is the best thing ever. Oh but the yeah. The first time you read Wheel of Time, you're like, it was fine. And then you read the whole series, and then the prologue becomes amazing. So maybe after we read 12 books, we'll come back to the Siege of Pale and be like, oh my god. I, I don't feel like I didn't understand it. Like I don't like. I mean, I'm sure there's things I didn't get. Like I mean. But when I went back and reread it, I was like, okay, like, yeah, Tatian, you know, he's... Oh, I think I got it. But yeah. maybe we don't know what there yeah. is to not know. Yeah, I agree. But I don't get it for now. Like, it was good. Like, I, I, I'm i not even hating on it. I just, like, I'm like, yeah, that was cool. And then, but it wasn't, like, one of my favorite moments at all. Yeah, I was I was kind of more just, like, focused on Tattersail and her 
emotions during that. Like it was yeah. very interesting. I forget the guy's name, but you know, she has this guy that they're like, we're just Talent. convenient. And then he dies and like protects her. And she's like, well, I was lying to myself and now I'm sad. Yeah. Um, I thought that was very human. Like it was, it was, a uh, yes, it was something that like, I don't think a lot of books would have done to like, an introductory character. And I, I thought it was really nice where it's like, she's like, actually I did kind of care for that guy more than I thought that I did. Yeah. I am. Um, again, it was why Tattersall was so well done. I think somehow Erickson did things that some modern authors would be scared to do because they would think that it would weaken their female character. Um, but because it was so rooted and just like very real emotions, it only enhanced her in my eyes. I agree. Um, in the end um yeah everyone says dead house gates is really the one we're gonna be do you have any predictions like. for dead house gates well i was gonna say something that i didn't like that i thought was gonna be unpopular and now i can't remember oh oh oh, oh i know um not super into tattersell and perrin as a coupling yeah i'm not either but if it makes you feel better and like episode two of 10 very big books the, the girl who had never read any fantasy or like very little fantasy or whatever was like, I bet sorry and Perrin are going to get together. And and I hated that suggestion worse. So. Wow. Thanks. You just made Perrin <laughs> and Chattertail seem like 800 times better. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. Cool. Um, oh, we didn't talk about sorry. Sorry was one of my top yeah, five. Sorry was one of my favorites too. As, as soon as I said that, I was like, oh, that plot line's cool. And sorry has like three people in her, right? Like, you, did I understand that correctly? Like there's the old lady is protecting her from yes. um oh the, shadow thrones shadow cotillion 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 oh, what, what do they also call it the rope thank you i was thinking like the rope yeah um, um so that's really well cool. so i i don't like um huge age gaps perrin's very young and tattersall's very very old and i feel like i always say complain when it's like the old dude and the young girl and i still feel that vibe um perrin's an adult though but parents and adult, yeah, it's fine. I wasn't like super into it. Um, but I guess like from what it seems, like everyone's in love with Tattersail. Like everyone's just like, yeah, she's great. So I guess like maybe I should just be happy for Perrin. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't yeah, give the, the the relationship much thought, to be honest. Like it's I don't not really very, remember what my feelings are. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's not very central other than it's the thing that makes Perrin turn on Lorne. So for that reason, I just wish I understood the relationship like just slightly better because yeah. I liked Lorne. So for me, it was a little bit like, why is Perrin turning on Lorne so much? I think my I had to just assume that in a couple years he was working with her. He saw things he didn't agree with. Um, that yeah. was hard. Erickson really like makes you work for why characters make decisions. Like sometimes he says you know, outright, like, hey, I think maybe somebody's trying to get rid of the bridge burners. Maybe we should desert. And then, you know, Tatter or uh, Whiskey Jack will be like, I'm not going to desert. Like, like there's outright statements of why people are doing things sometimes. But I also think there's a lot of times where they're just like, they say something and then you're like, oh, we have to infer that they think this because of this reason. And so I don't think that's bad. I just think it requires more work. Um, and I agree with the it. comment who makes it who said that it makes it seem like insta love because that can definitely be a problem. Yeah, and, and insta love is one of the other things that I hate the most too. Although I will say, the one thing I'll forgive about the insta love in this situation is that they're both in like a lot of emotional turmoil, and so I think sometimes that heightens emotions. Um, I will say it was it was more from Perrin. Like, why is Perrin like on this mission to save Tattersail now? Like, maybe because it's like oh. I guess she blew his mind. Who knows? It just like wasn't. Yeah, I was. That's why I didn't quite make sense. Um, yeah, I just wasn't like fully there on it. We got another three musketeers. Not Philip. Yeah, you we guys like this, it. huh? I didn't notice. I it, know. No. I also it. wouldn't like under like threat of death. I wouldn't have known the three musketeers' names. So. <laughs> yeah, me neither. <laughs> um. Yes. So that's the same thing, Adam. I don't like that trope. And so I still don't like it when it's a woman and a man. I think um, not to get on like just a lot in our society where like the idea of like, well, the hot older woman and the young boy, it's not exploitation because the boy wants it. And you're like, no, it's still exploitation, even though it's yeah. a guy and not a girl. I mean, again, though, Perrin is an adult man. I think so. I agree Isn't with you entirely. 19? 
Isn't he 19? I thought he was like in his mid 20s. Oh, someone tell me the age because I thought yeah, he was a teen I, still. This will change my opinion. If, if Perrin's 19, I will think it's a little grosser. But it's not. I'm not really defending it. Like I don't. I I, I more agree with you than don't if agree Karen with you. If Perrin was 30, I wouldn't think much of it. But like, isn't Tatterson like, like two or three hundred years old though? Yeah, but like at some point you're in a. I I feel like really like at 30 you're not being taken advantage of anymore. If you want to go off with yeah. a 200 year old, that's your own deal. I but agree. like, as, <laughs> so who? Someone has to know how old is he. Okay, so he's 23 by the that, that's about what I thought he was. Okay, it that's less gross for me. It's like it's less gross at 23 than 19. It's still not my favorite. Yes. Yeah, that's I mean that's what I think it is. And I think that maybe Perrin's youth does play into that. Like because he's really the one who's showing more, I think, than um what do you think happened with Tattersale? Because I think I understand it, but I probably don't. Oh, I, I wasn't trying to understand it. She gets yeah, to be so, reborn. And so the one guy exploded. Um, yes, she explodes him. And and then like. Okay, so this is how I saw it. Um, she's she, a baby now, uh, right? Well, she attempts to do basically what Hairlock did, except no one was there with the magic to take her soul. Right. So she... What did she get into? I think she got into something and she's just like running around scared because I keep being like, there's like, she, there's this person who's running wild, who's scared, the new magic. And then she gets taken in by like this other society and gets like birthed. As a baby. Like still tatter sail, but she's like a baby. She's now in a baby instead of a marionette. Yeah. It's kind of what. But is it, is it just tatter sail or is it tatter sail and the guy that exploded? Oh, I think it's either just tatter sail or Tattersell and slightly a new personality because she's in this baby. I don't think the exploded oh, okay. guy has anything to do with it. Okay. I wasn't is sure it... just because like it was like a whole thing that happened at once. And then there was like a line. I don't remember what it is now, but there was a line when Perrin was talking to her or like something around there where I was like, is there like the other wizard dude in this as well? No, no, no. Oh, yeah. She goes into the remains oh, of Oh, into the remains of Nightshade. Yeah, 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 okay. That's, so what that's, I that's who I think. So that's sorry. Not the guy who exploded. Um, is it the is it now Nightshell and tattersail mixed together do you think i don't i thought it was tattersail and now like some other personality okay. because she was birthed but either way one of us is one right of us or is we're right. both wrong oh, or we're both wrong but tattersail. on the way okay belladan that's the name yeah okay i don't know why i just pictured belladan as the thing from fantastic four i don't know why like just a big rock guy, <laughs> like a big rock guy. <laughs> yeah i don't know why <laughs> Um, yeah, that part was interesting as well. Um, yeah, that whole so maybe is. it's all three of them. Do you think that could be a thing? I'm like convinced, the, no, but <laughs> <laughs> the people who have read these books are having a lot of fun right now. <laughs> I, I'm like, so I, I just like so convinced that it's like Tattersail, but um. Like she is now born into a new woman, so she doesn't have like all her memories. She's not completely Tattersell, but she kind of is. Like that's what I'm thinking. But then Philip said, "Well, it's not just Tattersell." So like, yeah, but it could still be Tattersell plus a baby, you know, <laughs> plus a tribal baby, baby and Tattersell. How'd you feel about that birth scene? I don't know. Like it was fine. Yeah, it reminded me a lot of um, not because they're similar, because they made me feel the same. Oh, you might not have read that book. Did you read the Wheel of Time book where, oh, this is not a Wheel of Time spoiler life. It's fine. No one here needs to care about this scene. It's at the very beginning of like one of the later books, like between nine and 12, maybe eight to 12, where um, Elaine and Avienda become spear sisters, like officially. Did you read oh. that scene? I think I read references to it. I don't think I read the yeah, scene. It's a weird scene. And that's how this birth scene made me feel. Yeah. So, I mean, it was weird, but I like, I don't know. The, so, I was listening to the audiobook for immersion reading for a lot of the book, like maybe like 60% mm -hmm. of it. Um, and I would frequently pause and then like re like I would just pause wherever I got to and then just go back and read the last couple of paragraphs. Uh, if I felt like something was confusing or if there was a lot of names thrown in or something like that. But for the most part, I just kept it going. So, like if there was a scene that was just I just wasn't that interested in, I would just be like, "Hey, we're we're moving on." So was that one of those scenes? 
Also, I'm going to highlight yes, Philip's it was, comment sorry. just to annoy yeah. Alan that it's not his comment. Well, Alan hates um, women and babies, so he's getting um, that reputation. I will say at least the birth scene had some accurate stuff in it. I was like, okay, Erickson's probably knows what happens in a birth. So I guess like that's like points for Erickson because things actually happen that don't usually happen in fantasy births. But I have no idea what the bone phone is. Did I just, I don't, I don't remember this at all. Oh, 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 this is um when he gets like the, the bone the, at the end the, and they can talk to each other. Oh yeah. That was wild. Um, yeah. I mean, again, like it, I was just like, okay, this is wild. You know, like, <laughs> um, they're like the thing about going into Malazan now is that I know like a lot of just like random, like, just like, I know there's dinosaurs in this series. Sorry if you didn't I know didn't. that. I didn't, dude. You don't know the context. I didn't even finish the thought. I, 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 I held back. Listen, I don't no. know anything. I don't want to okay. know there's dinosaurs in this series. But I, you don't know anything about them. It's fine. There's more to it. That's why I specifically only My said My enjoyment dinosaurs. will specifically be hurt now. That's yeah, what the research won't... shows. Listen, the spoilers. Yeah, it's a comedy. That's why. <laughs> um, but anyway, like, so I just know, like, so I'm just like, yeah, like, there's just wild stuff all the time. So that's how I feel. Yeah, I but no, that was question cool. it. Should I question it? I was like, oh, cool. Um, yeah. It's, I didn't expect it to not make an appearance again. Yeah. Yes, very specific dinosaurs. That isn't. Um, that's curious. That wasn't. I thought that was going to be a plot point, but I, I also suspected that, and have been confirmed that like characters are completely new in Dead House Gates. Um, that's like at the very beginning of the Wheel of Time. So I don't know why we keep going back to this, but I guess it's just in the same time period where that one random Trolloc talks, and then no Trolloc ever talks again for the rest of the series. Mm -hmm. It's like he just totally dropped it after that first one. There's a lot of fantasy series where there's little bits of pieces of that in first novels. Yeah. And, then um, and things it. just like don't get picked up. There's again. so many things that happen in this book. I forgot we had not mentioned the stuff um, with, with uh, gone with the wind Peron. How do you say that name? Ganos? 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 Oh, Ganos? Ganos? <laughs> Ganos? Um, the way I say it's going to be wrong. So just say it a different way true. than the way yeah, I say, say it. The opposite way of you. But, um, I, I lost my track of thought. Oh, just him and in like when he was talking to the gods when he like died after killing oh, yeah. the hound. That was really cool. That was like one of that my favorite scenes. Cool. I was like, what's going on here? And then when Quick Ben was just like, he was just like, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> yeah, and he just left. I was like, he Quick was ben. literally, he was that meme where it's like the guy that's like this and then it just disappears. That's what yes. he was. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> So Quick Ben was my second favorite character after Tattersail. And that's like yeah, pretty Quick much 90% because of that scene where like yeah. everyone's scared and then he tricks them and he's like, I was your like, whatever. I was like, hi in your church. Bye. Um, yeah, I like Quick Ben quite a bit. Yeah. And like him and Kalam have a really interesting relationship. Actually, this is what I was going to say for my predictions for Deadhouse Gates. So I'll just say now. Okay, let's go into Deadhouse Gates predictions. Okay. Um, I do know that there are at least a couple characters that recur in Death House Gates. I know that it's not, like, I don't know who they are, but I just know that, like, it's not yeah. entirely a new cast. Um, my bet is that we'll see Anamanda Rake because he seems like a guy that's going to pop yeah. up in, like, basically every book or something like that, and he has a floating moon. Yeah. And then I think the other ones we're going to see is, like, Sari and Crocus and Quick Ben and Kalam. And who, or did Quick Ben and Kalam both go, or was it, it was, like, Mallet? They had a couple of the bridge burners, and they yeah. were, like, going to take them back to her home. And it was like on another continent or whatever. I think we're going to see them again. That's what I yeah, think. Yeah, I think um, we're going to see Quick Ben. That's like for sure. I'm like, I feel relatively certain we're going to see Quick Ben. Um, and I, but I do think that we may see some of the other characters, but it's going to be like passing in the background, like just a quick mention uh, more than um, like the main character. Um, Fiddler, right? Okay. I, I got the, the last couple dudes. Fiddler was like the medic. No, Mallet was the medic. Fiddler was the fiddler. <laughs> fiddler was the fiddler. What an It's been a month, man. guys. I swear, if we'd done this right after, I would know the characters better. But um, um Yeah. Um, I don't do I have any other prediction for Dead House Gates? I don't I picture a desert. I don't know if somebody's told me there's a desert or if it's I'm just getting the vibes from this desert specifically, but I just picture I just picture the middle part of Kingdoms of Heaven. I just feel like that's what the book is going to be. 
Mm. It's just people fighting. Gardens of the Moon. So Gardens of the Moon is like a title that relates but doesn't relate, right? So what do we think Dead House Gates means? Uh, I don't even have a hot clue. Are they going to actually I do know, to a city called Deadhouse? I do know there's Dead a House? thing called the Chain of Dogs in the second book that people love. And I have no, I don't have a, I don't have a single guess what that could be. But I don't think it's or, a literal chain of dogs. Or it, it could be a literal chain of dogs. For it all could you know. be, but I don't know why people would love that. It could be like, we're going to go back into like the death God. And so it's like dead house, the gates of hell sort of thing. Yeah. Um, I, otherwise I, I, I've heard it's going to be on a new continent. So a new setting. Um, you said desert. Sure. Um, that's, that's a guess. I think there's a siege. I don't know. There's there's a siege in every fantasy book. I think there's going to yeah. be a war. I think there's going to be two sides of something fighting. Oh, so it's going to um, be historical fiction, huh? I think there's going to be a female character. I yeah. think, like, I mean. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm not going to guess too many things beyond that. Malazan. See, if it was a literal chain of dogs, do you think this person would say that? I don't think they would. Probably not. Oh, so what did, okay, two things. What did you think about um, Perrin saving the wolf, the hound? I'd forgotten about it till right now, so I guess it didn't leave that much of an impact on me. Um, I I thought it was smart, if I remember correctly, because didn't he save him as like an idea where it's like, hey, maybe one day you'll thank me for like, like not thank me, but like he, he felt like he was doing it to like for future sight of like one day the hound will be able to help him or something. Was that right? Yeah. I don't think I got that. It did end up being that way, but I was like, why are you helping the hound? Oh, uh, maybe Which that I was some post hoc reasoning I added to it. I don't remember. Yeah. But I, I think that is what it was. I just thought it was a very interesting scene. I kind of liked it. Um, but yeah, uh, that was good. Sorry. was really interesting. I liked the whole old woman thing, protecting her. Um, her being the assassin. I really yeah. liked um, like Whiskey Jack's denial of like he yeah. clearly knew Sorry was not on the up and up, and people were just like, "Dude, she's seventeen and she just straight up like cuts people's skin off." And he's just like, "I mean, sometimes seventeen year olds have had a hard life. I don't, I don't judge, man. I, I, I've had a hard life. like just in total denial." And then as the book goes on more and more, literally people are like, we're pretty sure she's actually the rope. And he's just like, I don't Maybe. know. Maybe. <laughs> like, just total denial. Yeah, I, I think that is like the... Um... Maybe that's why the characters, it was so hard for me to choose a favorite character. Because I did say that, like, I think this was one of the hardest times I had choosing a top five favorite characters. And I think it's because they just, no one ever acts the way you expect them to, but they also act completely realistically. So it's not like people are bonkers, but they just never act. Like you just, Whiskey Jack should be the person who's like, yeah, I've seen stuff. But instead he's like, well, they've, they're war torn. I'm sure it's normal for a 17 year old to assassin people. It's fine. Yeah. Um, like, a lot of the things with the characters are like, like in, in a I lot of books. They're just teasing us now. I know. They're just into it. Um, in a lot of books, yeah. like pe people do the things that like other books make people do, but like people don't actually act that way. Like, I mean, a common thing is like people are screaming and then they realize afterwards that it's them. Like things, things like that, where it's just like common book tropes, but like people don't yes. act that way. And I think Erickson's good at um, making people do things that like you're like, oh, like people just don't usually do this in books. But it's like a thing that a person would actually do. Like one thing that I'm thinking of particularly is how um, Lacine wants to get rid of the bridge burners because they're like loyal to the emperor and stuff. But she respects Dujek so much that she just like doesn't want to get rid of him because she's like that will cause more problems than it's worth. To like he he's just one dude, but he's really re well respected. And I just feel like that's like a slight nuance that. I don't know. Like, I, I guess I just didn't expect, like, I just expected her to wholesale want the bridge burners gone. But when Lauren's like, you're absolutely not killing Dujek. And like the other guy was like, but we, we could like Tayshen was like, why don't we just get rid of them? And she's like, you're absolutely not doing that. Like, I don't know. I thought that level of nuance was interesting. Yeah. It's um, people's motivations are just a lot clearer in the book. Like I, I yeah. never question people's motivations. Like it always makes sense to me um, why they're doing stuff. Um, Lucy is such a tough hang. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, Tanner, yeah. you missed it. I did make fun of her Malazan pronunciation just for you. Oh, is Tanner the one who's really upset by it? Uh, I mean, fake upset, but yeah, he he was the one that Malazan. was like, it's... yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. A literal chain of dogs would definitely make a huge impression on Philip. True. Well, when True. I hear chain what of is dogs, that compassion? I either think of like the hounds chained. Or that kind of looks like the cover real... almost. Do you think this is the chain of dogs? I feel like the real chains. Oh, I just noticed that there are wolves in the fire. Did you notice that? Yes, that's why I said that. Oh, I didn't notice. What did right you now. think that was? I barely have looked at this cover. It was just like fire. <laughs> oh, okay. Dust. And are you saying desert because there is a desert? I'm realizing it's not a fire. Is that supposed to be sand? Yes. That's why I said, I don't know if I'm just getting it from this. You know what, though? Um, I never pay that much attention to covers either. My wife, whenever she reads a book, to like reimmerse herself in the experience, she'll like sit down and she'll relook at the cover to like get herself back yeah. into it. And then she'll like point out like she was like reading Mistborn and she's like, this is a dumb cover. Or it was Warbreaker. She, she handed the cover for Warbreaker. Yes. And I just like never okay, noticed. First of all, I, I don't maybe don't say your wife's name on here. I love your wife. I could talk all day about how terrible the Warbreaker cover is. It like makes me angry after I read that book and loved it because it makes no sense. Yeah. Why is it's Siri terrible. holding night blood? I know it's, it's the There's worst. No but anyway, I had never noticed any of those details. I just like read the book and like, didn't look at it. And then she was pointing it out to me. And I was like, yeah, that's a terrible cover. Like none of this makes any sense. It looks like she's eating a liquor. I don't know. Um, oh no, cool. I don't want it to be soul crushing. I don't want it to be soul crushing either. <laughs> Um, what was I going to say about covers? Oh, you know, when people do that, I almost did that game where, you know, you get blindfolded and someone reads the description. I want to do that really you. bad. Yeah. Yeah. I almost did it. I always thought it might be fun for Zach and I to do it, but then I did it. You should. But, you and Zach need to do more videos together. Maybe. Comment. Um, tell, tell her that she should do it. Comments come through for me. Um, maybe, but I would be bad at that. Like, I, I feel like you could be like, you could tell me the book and be like, describe the cover and I probably wouldn't get it right. So I think someone else describing the cover to me is going to be rough, but <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. And I think, you know, when I did um, a ton of research, I, I um, ranked the Wheel of Time covers and I ended up doing a deep dive on how covers are made and stuff. And surprisingly, like authors have very little say often over their covers, like, being a Brandon Sanderson fan, I, I expect everyone to have that level of control, but it's very, very rare. Um, a lot of times they get assigned an artist. Sometimes they don't even see the cover before it goes out. They have no say on it. So a lot of fantasy covers just make like zero sense. Sorry, I just I just noticed that Alan sent me a message. I was like posting all of the, the, the link in all the discords. And then you sent me the StreamYard link. So I copied it. And then I accidentally sent it to like Alan's Discord. So Alan was like, Kyle, you idiot. You sent the, the invitation to be on the stream. And I was like, oh, I just noticed now. I was like, oh. Well, look, no one's abused it yet. No one's yeah. tried to join. Someone should have. Um, so we're going to get a lifted soul before we're crushed. I'm okay That's with my good. soul being destroyed. I just want more buffer time, I guess. I don't know. Also, I Alan, should mention. Alan, I could never do them as well as you. So don't worry. I read this book at the same time as I read Harrow the Ninth, which is, and I'm not being hyperbolic, far and away the most confusing book I've ever read in my life. And so it made Gardens of the Moon much better in confusion level for me. But then after I was done both of these books, I just, it, my brain was just broken. I'm just, I just have not been able to read ever since. So I want everyone to know that you were like essentially live DMing me while reading Harrow the Ninth. Like... Every chapter Did you really just like, hear me say Harrow the Ninth and then in real time pronounce it wrong? <laughs> Whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, DMing me about how confused you were in that book. It was like, I, I have no idea what's going on. I need to go read Gardens of the Moon because at least I understand what's happening there. Yeah, that book is very confusing. Um, let's see. The Dead House Gates cover is a pretty good cover. Okay. So then we're confirmed. Sand. Chain of Dogs is Sand Dogs. Um, or the secret society that are running up the page. What um, is Alan saying right now? What do you mean? 
Alan said, I'm like a sunrise because I make people angry. Is this a quote in the book that I'm forgetting? Or Maybe. is he just being mean to me? I don't I don't know with Alan. Um, yeah, so Dead House Gates, I really, again, I have really no expectations going into Dead House Gates other than I probably won't know any of the characters. I know by reputation it is most people's favorite in the series. So that does hype I, me up a bit for it. I don't hear um, that that often. I hear Memories of Ice, Bone Hunters, and uh, like if I was to name the top three just from like what I have heard, I think the most common top three are the Crippled God, Bone Hunters, and Memories of Ice. That's not what I hear. If I made a top three, it'd be Dead House Gates, Memories of Ice, and then I don't know a third one because that's the two I hear the most. Okay. Like Dead House well, Gates, Bone Hunters comments... is the one with a bunch of convergence. Everybody talks about mm. it's like. It's like, I heard you like convergence. So I put convergence on your convergence so you can converge while you converge. You know, like that's what I hear okay. about that. <laughs> Do you not get that reference? I get the reference, just okay. the way you said it was very funny. <laughs> <laughs> um anyway. Dead House well, on the comment section of my video, I heard Dead House Gates the most. Okay. And that's the one everyone was saying. So I have high expectations. Hopefully that's not a bad thing. Um, I have heard it gets more philosophical, which mm -hmm. um, I like. I mean, we yeah, read all of Dandelion Dynasty, like so I was—I <laughs> literally was just going to say that. I was like, "Well, we like Dandelion Dynasty, yeah. so like we can probably hang." See, I hear um, I hear a lot of mixed things about Toll the Hounds. I think that's the one that Alan hates. Yeah, um, I actually weirdly have heard Toll of the Hound is like very like uh, mixed. I will. It's funny, I for Alan's Jeopardy, I memorized the order of all of the Malazan books just in case there was book math and then there wasn't book math. So at some point I did know all the order of them. Oh, I know but the now order. It's scrambled in my head. Um, but I'm I'm curious, looking forward, looking way forward. People several people have warned me about book six. So like if there is a point where I will give up. On my Malazan journey, I am guessing which it is book do you book. think is book six? I think it's book four. House of Chains. No, people just said to me like literally book six. They did oh, not okay. give me a title. Okay. They just maybe. Said book yeah, I don't know. I I've I've heard a lot of things about uh, book four that make me think that might be where you have to hmm. toss it in if you want, if 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 it's too much for you. Yeah, but maybe book six I... is even worse. Yeah, I I if let's see here's. Here's what I could say about me tossing in the towel. Um, if there is a lot of assault and it is shown on screen, that will be difficult for me. If it is a fade to black, it will not bother me. Yeah. So people so the, have like, yeah. So the crowd, the the comments are all talking about how good book six is. I don't think that's the problem for book four. And I think it would be like if book six is where there's a lot of explicit like sexual assault or sexual content and stuff. I do know. So here's what I know. I'll I tell you right now. I wasn't saying that because you do get in trouble from YouTube. Which oh, is I'm why so I usually just say assault. I don't I don't yeah. know things. But you know what? We're an hour in. YouTube's not gonna watch an hour of this. Um <laughs> the robots will. The YouTube people I'm sorry. don't sorry, like you're it. demonetized. Okay. <laughs> I'm very sorry. I won't do it again. Um I I hear book four introduces a character that is really hard for some people, and mm. that might be might that might be your big struggle. But I, I like how so far yeah. everyone's been saying like Different books. different books. <laughs> They're like, no, this is the one. Um, so that I think it's um if if it's not explicit, I will be probably fine. Like depending. I'll probably be fine. The biggest thing I'm really worried about that's a specific trigger for me is lots of child harm. So if we get to a point where a book has like a lot of child harm, whether it is explicit or not, it does not matter for me. I like can't sleep. Like I get anxiety about that. Like I read a book once that had abandonment in it. And it was like, I couldn't sleep that night. So like I, that so would be obviously, my, that's my biggest worry. It would be very like dependent on what's actually going on in the book. So I know you can't quantify this, but like um, how much would you be willing to like, just skip that portion uh, if it was a problem? Like, do you think like very willing? Okay. Yeah. Very like, willing. Like if someone my question like, trust is, me, You'll like it. Just skip this chapter and you don't have to read it. Yeah. Cause when I, so this is, this is unrelated, but kind of related. Um, I'm rereading a song of ice and fire. And there was a specific chapter in the second book that I was like, you know, if my wife ever reads this, or if I ever convince you to read it, I'm just going to tell them 
skip this chapter. And then the rest is fine. I'm just like, this is the chapter, skip it. And I, and I logged it specifically in my head. So that's why I was like, Thank you know, you. if there's just like a chapter you need to skip that. Yeah. Maybe when we get to book four, I'll make sure that you are always about like 50 <laughs> to 80 pages ahead of me. Yeah, yeah. And then when you get there, you'll be like, skip pages 120 through 130. Yeah. Um, and it also depends. Like this book I was thinking of actually wasn't a fantasy. It was called like the language of flowers. And this woman has a baby and then literally abandons it for 24 hours. And I had just given birth like three months prior. So like that was particularly mm. triggering because I had a newborn or like, um, I won't say what it was because people would actually maybe read Oathbringer. In Oathbringer, there's a three-year-old and I had a three-year-old at the time that Oathbringer came out. So like yes. that was like extremely upsetting. So it also depends. Like if the kids are close to my kids' ages, it's going to be more like yeah, I, triggering I totally for get me. That. Um, so um yeah, I'll just like, this is perfect. I will, when we get to book four, you'll just be ahead and you can just okay. tell me when to skip. I can I, I will. I'll skip. I skip sex scenes all the time in books. Yeah, that's the thing is that like, man, I just skip so much stuff I don't care for. And then people are just like, how, like, okay, people will Well, I never me, like, skip stuff I don't care for. But like, no, 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 like, but like, I specific... what? Like, like in the Greenbone saga, when we got to Green, like uh, Jade Legacy, there was like a couple of sex scenes. I'm like, there's no way this is important. So I'm just going to like skip three yeah. pages. But I don't, I don't literally skip. Like I just, my, my eyes just go yes. past it. And then, yes. and then if I, yes. if I scroll past it and then all of a sudden they're like, wait, you killed that guy. Then I'll just go back. But like, you know, yeah, it's, that's it's exactly always me. Or there's like dialogue tags. I'm like, oh, cool. Dialogue. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's fine. Okay. Um, sorry, yeah, I don't know. I, I, missing I, all the content. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah. The, the comments have just been like all over like i'm not all over but like there's just been a lot to catch up on whenever i'm looking and not talking it's because i'm reading yeah that's what me too so i want to make sure we're doing this um forgot more they recall so yeah and so like that's the thing it, that also matters a lot for me um for example there was child harm in song for the void which was my favorite spfbo um finalist this year loved that book it was really tough for me to read that section, but it, it was done with a very specific purpose. It was not just like, let me show you how bad everyone is. And so right. that will also affect it a lot. Like if I feel like I understand where Erickson's coming from and it's not just to be edgy, that does like influence, influence me. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to name the book, but there's a different book that like there was some stuff that I read that I was just like, there's no way this is worth whatever it is. So just, I'm not into this at all. And intentions definitely matter. And like, also like, again, neither of us have read to this point. So I, I could just totally be like, Oh yeah, this is gratuitous later. But like the way people talk about it will give me a reason to be like, okay, well people say that this is the here for a reason. And that like, it all makes sense. And even just with gardens of the moon, right? Like he's, he's pretty like, egalitarian with like you know male female stuff like I, I i just feel like if he builds up trust over time i don't know yeah and that Let's that actually is something i thought about i was like well how he is treating his female characters in book one make me feel more confident going forward that i'm not going to see some of the issues i see surrounding those topics so yeah. i do he has gained my trust already so mm -hmm. i agree with that um I have read a couple in Abercrombie for the humor because they are hilarious. So yes, I have. Yeah, they're funny. But not my favorite. Um, oh, thanks, Philip. Um, thanks for joining us, Philip. Thanks for joining. Um, yeah, everything is done for a theme. I don't actually skip things. I just like, like, I don't know. You just get good at like, it's just like not really processing it. Like I know Alan complains about like um, Sanderson repeating magic system stuff all the time. But like once I know what the thing is, I don't really read the re-explanation. I just, I just move past. Well, that. we know you don't actually read because you listen at three times speed. Are we doing this? No, we're not doing this. I what we're going to do fun. instead, what we're doing instead is I cannot do a whole live stream without mentioning this. I was actually going to mention it at the beginning, which is that my favorite TV show of all time is the wire. <laughs> and <laughs> no, legitimately, legitimately, I honestly think it helped me Does this have read a point? this book. Yes, I'm not just saying it. I'm legitimately. Okay. I, I thought you I were literally just thought about this. Annoy me. <laughs> no, of course not. No. Okay. So my favorite show is The Wire, and I, I honestly think watching it so much and like loving that show so much helped me a lot with this book 
because it is very similar. Like the plot is entirely different, but like in terms of like the complexity and the fact that you need to pay attention to everything really, really helped me. And like, I don't skim or I didn't skim in gardens of the moon at all because as the wire taught me, it's all connected and all the pieces matter. And that's how Malazan works too. So I'm just like, Oh, all these pieces work. So there I got my, I got my wire. I, I meant in. to bring up that, like all of your favorite authors don't like the lost ending, but I have no tie into Malazan for that. I mean, maybe um, we'll meet Steven Erickson and you can ask him about it. Yes. Didn't Jimmy meet Steven Erickson? Jimmy's probably not here anymore. I should be like, ask him about lost. Can the you next text time him? Well, him. Philip could, you know, I'm sure he has Steven oh, Erickson Philip. on speed dial. Except Philip yeah. seems like the kind of person who's like above He's never that. had a, he doesn't even have a TV. He doesn't even know what lost it. Yeah. Just, <laughs> like, just like, oh, above. is it, is it a, a television show? <laughs> I love no, no, Philip. I don't know. That. I don't know why I Philip make fun of him blessed. that way. It's just, it's just, he's just so vibrant when he talks about something. It's just fun. No, no. I was gonna say more like Philip is above asking authors petty things like that. Like he's having intellectual mm. conversations. True. Um, not asking about the TV show Lost. Yeah. Oh, he's saying that you have a problem with pronunciation. I probably now. do. I don't even know how I say it. Do I say Malazan? I think. I, I think the big issue is you care still. And I stopped caring about my pronunciation two years ago. Like the first Cosmere video I made and people were mad about it. I was like, mm, I already don't care. So like, if you're going to follow me, you just, you have to accept that's what it's going to be. Like, I know now that Malazan isn't how I should say it, but Listen, here I am. That short of you pronouncing things wrong is the funniest thing. I don't think you understand uh, how funny that th th the video was. Like I, I had the, like the rhyme in my head because I, I watched it so many times in a row. Like what was it? like uh, ad nauseum. I don't know how you said ad nauseum. However you said ad nauseum is hysterical, but um, ad nauseum. Well, the this is slightly off topic, but since we are talking about my mispronunciations, I do have a funny story because so last night I interviewed Django Wexler, right? And I had this horrible moment as I was about to ask a question out loud that I had never said his character names out loud. Like it was oh, no. this horrible realization in the moment that I'd only ever messaged people about his characters. So I went and oh, was and like, his name's all win? French too. Well, so I didn't know that. So I, <laughs> I asked Alan's question, which is who would win Napoleon or Janice? And he was like, oh. Janice like right after and the video that came out this morning was me talking about how i do not care that jasna's pronounced yasna you should and just assume like, oh, all j's are yeah oh uh, yeah <laughs> this is going to follow me follow me for like just forever so anyway i'll make a short about my models on pronunciations as well um for uh, what it's worth i'm from the same city as, as steven erickson so we uh, would say it the same way if uh like he he would have the same accent as me theoretically, but I don't I've never heard him say it. Well, Erickson himself said he didn't care, and so I think yeah. people do accept like either Malazan or um, what's the how do you say it? Malazan. Malazan. Those seem to be like the two like oh that's fine. It's apparently Malazan that's not suddenly okay. It's not. So, it's a crime. Whatever. Um. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, here's the thing. Here's the thing, though. It just, it doesn't matter. It doesn't stick in my brain. Like, I just, I read books, and I mostly talk about books in text format. Like, so yeah. when people comment to me, they're still commenting just how the names look. Like, they aren't, like, it just, it doesn't matter. Like, it just, yeah. it doesn't matter. It just doesn't stick. So. I agree. I mean, it's it's fun because it's not like lore that you don't know how to talk, but like mm -hmm. it doesn't actually matter. Like if anybody takes this seriously, like they, they shouldn't. But I think I mean, there, are, there have been fun. in fairness some that I have changed because the right pronunciation just like rolls off the tongue actually better. So I have fixed some, but um, yeah. Um, I know most people are joking. Yeah. You can tell the difference when people are being actually rude versus joking. Um. <clears throat> Yeah, so I'm excited. I'm looking forward to it. Um, we're starting really soon. I'm planning on starting probably, what's today, Wednesday? I'll probably start Saturday. Okay, I'm going to start tonight. 
but I won't get okay. very far because I'm also reading Golden Sun and finishing the Black Company. Actually, that's pretty interesting because I started the Black Company the other day because I wanted to get in one more book for February and I did not finish it. But I'm halfway through the first Black Company book and you can definitely see Steven Erickson's influences uh, mm. on the Bridge Burners, especially like it, it almost reads exactly as if it was like a Bridge Burner, just like section of Malazan. It, it's really interesting. Cool. Um, yeah, I agree, Gavin. Um, yeah, I just, I've got to, um, finish that max battle book. Maybe I will start Friday, but probably just, um, not tomorrow, but I'm very excited. I wonder if it'll go quicker. I kind of hope I can get through it quicker because it did take me like three weeks to read gardens of the moon. So I'm hoping I can like cut that down a little bit. Um, I mean, I still have yeah, the we'll audiobooks to help me for the first three. And then that's what I'm going to get slow because after the first uh i i can't like just listen to this series but listening to the audiobook while i read it keeps me on a consistent pace which helps mm. me like keep reading at a, at a fast pace um but then i don't have the audiobooks for the past the first three and ralph lister is my homie so i probably won't get them so then i'll just read much slower for the next ones so no i'm not um I'm conflicted of whether I want to or not. I'm um, not going to. I don't know how to say this without like sounding bad, but like I think I'm just going to be fine. Like I, people were like, "Kyle, take notes," and I'm like, "I'm not. I'm not going to take notes. Like I'm fine. Like I, I didn't have trouble following things. If I have actual questions that are specific, I'm just going to ask somebody. I don't. Yeah, for me, it's PowerPoint. that um, I don't like reading to feel like homework. And I yeah. never annotate books. Like that's not, Neither. I don't like to annotate books. It doesn't spark joy or whatever. And so it, I wouldn't like to sit down and feel like, well, to enjoy this, I have to take notes. Like I like to just treat it like a book. I think um, if, I, if I felt I needed to, I would, because I know how helpful that is for memory. But I just know that like, it's not going to help more than me just being immersed in what's going on like like if i need to know a character's name i'm going to remember it like almost always well for me and like i have i find his the like um whatever he calls it in the beginning the, uh, um drama his little like personage. players yeah wait this for a second page has something called chains of dogs on it the the plot thickens What? Does Chain my of Dogs have this? Well, Kane's March, the second half. Oh. Interesting. So maybe it's like maybe it's like a trial. You know, it's like I gotta I gotta defeat the chain of dogs. Or it's like a like a mountain range. Huh. Well, anyway, that was, sorry, that was a plot thickener right on life. Oh, uh, you know, all the list of the people, I use this a lot, actually. Like, when I was reading Gardens of the Moon, I used this a lot just to jog my memory on some of, like, the lesser talked about people. Did the first um, one even have one? I don't think my copy had one. Oh, mine did. I used it quite a bit. Um, oh, it does. I didn't look at this one time. Oh, it was really helpful for me for some of the lesser talked about characters just to remind myself, like where they fit oh yeah um, ocelot the the relic and ocelot duel i forgot about that that was pretty cool oh and so the that, circle that was breaker? actually helpful for me i will i'll say this um if matt's still here that's something i'd probably use after i read the whole novel like before yeah, we said, do our next live i might flip through those powerpoints to make sure i really caught everything but while i'm reading it I just want to read the book. Like that is just like my own personal personality. Yeah. He said he's going to email it to you. That's the, that's the perfect time. Cause I literally well, was like, I'm pretty I would sure like I got it everything. Emailed to me. So thank you, Matt. Yes. <laughs> I will accept the email. I just probably won't read it to after the book. Um, I just like read the summary. Cause I was just like, I want to make sure that I don't miss a whole section or something, but that's when it's best. Um, yeah. I was going to say the only book I have, I've only ever annotated two books. Um, and those were Sword of Destiny, which the funny thing is my annotations are all in the book still because I'm lazy. So I could go pull them off right now and you'd see them. And then, um, 
the Way of Kings Prime. Yeah, um, that was, and those that were was a good video. Those are both good videos. Those were homework, and those were yeah. homework. Like that's the yeah. thing. I read both of those as homework, so that's why I did it. Um, so, yeah, so Ladrick just pointed out this. I did look at a lot because the so characters I, did look I could at the keep straight. Here's a great question for you guys um, who've read the book. I sometimes get very nervous to look at glossaries because I am worried they will give stuff away for in the book. Are Erickson's glossaries non-spoilery? I definitely question. looked at this too, though, during yeah, the book. That's the one oh, I yeah, looked at I more because it's like all these like things like, like I, okay, there's like two things. Oh yeah, things. I looked at like both the, of them. The, there's like the Talane Mass. We didn't talk about any of the races. Let's see, there's so many things oh. in these books. Like we didn't talk about. Okay, can I tell you that I looked up the Talani Mass like five times in this, in the back of this book. Like, am I forgetting stuff about them? Tell well, me more. And then I was it like, was no, the I just Talane don't know Mass, them. which is like Tool. Tool is a Talane Mass. He's like a zombie dude. And then the tits, the the titsy andy, the the titsy, the the those guys. I that's said titsy Rachel andy. People, <laughs> titsy andy, yeah. You like how I have like the most like American <laughs> accent for everything I say. Like it's just so hard. I hit hard on every letter. Yeah. So th that was the um, Anamanda Rakes people, right? Yeah. I feel like that's right. And then yeah, there was yeah. the like bug people, which were the Maranth. And then the, the, the Jagnon. People. I feel like those are all the race. The bug people. The Maranth. Who are those? They're bug people. I don't know. Like they were they were like in they they fought them in the Siege of Pale and then and then I think it was it was either Do Jack or Whiskey people. Jack was talking to them. Um I'm sure chat people will be able to be more specific than me because they weren't very important in this book. I had a inkling they're just gonna be better. Yeah, yeah, the Maranth. Let me see it. Oh, oh. The Maranth. That's what I said. I the Maranth. You said the Moran. I said the Moranth every single time. I'm okay, going to play well, this here. back after. Okay. Uh, I, yeah, just, I guess like bug people is just not what it seemed like to me. Can somebody tell they ride flying things? Okay. Are they yeah, not? They what does munitions bug mean? People to me. I knew they rode flying things. Okay. Somebody said they, they fly on bugs. So maybe that's what I'm thinking of. I thought they were like bug people. I was thinking of like I the guy from Rick and Morty. I said Tiste Andy. Tiste Andy is what I said. So someone can Tiste correct Andy. me. I won't list them, but you can correct me. Yeah, I know, but I just didn't think they were bug people. Like I know they rode flying things. They literally I, fly on bugs, but they're not bug people themselves. That's what I'm saying. I think I was just wrong. I think I just merged it. But then somebody else said okay. they, they have bug helmets. So I don't know. They're just bug-like. They just so really this is like good bugs. to know because I will say this the Wheel of Time wiki is horrible. Terrible. Terrible at spoiling things. Like, luckily, like I had read them all before I went there, but people got really spoiled on that. That's what it was. Okay. Yeah. I remember. So they okay. wear armor that looks bug like, but nobody's ever seen what they look like underneath. Yeah. Okay. I remember it. Great. But you said bug people. So I was thinking like bugs with arms. People anyway. think they are bug people. If you saw a guy looked like a bit with like bug looking. Would you be like, I got to see what his face looks like first? No. You'd be like, that's a bug. Maybe guy. I would. You don't know me. <laughs> Maybe I would. Um, yeah, they use bombs. Yeah, okay. I'm remembering I was now. super. I was super interested in them. I think that's a super interesting thing that I would like to hear more about. I also, we didn't talk about like setting either. Like, I don't know what we talked about for an hour. But um, Moonspawn. Sanderson mostly. Moonspawn Moons is so cool. So cool. So cool. I really loved that piece of world building. Um, yeah. Um, I kept expecting it to crash. Like, I don't know if it's going to crash later, but I kept being like, this is the scene where Moonspawn crashes. And it. we just had a lack of crashing. I don't know if I'm just like... I didn't want it to I crash. I want Moonspawn to be... I didn't want it. To, I just expected it to. Like, I, I, It's not like I'm like, yeah, I just thought that's what was going to happen. Maybe it's because it's a gardens of the moon. Like, what is a garden of that moon? Like, I don't get. Is it just because it's, it's in. Is, is the world the garden of the moon? What is the titular garden? It is. Hmm. So I had several thoughts. I thought gardens of the moon was supposed to be like. Like an evocative title because moon spawn isn't really the moon. Like. But they call it Moon Spawn, and it has gardens on it because it's oh, not. Oh, I moon. see. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So, like, gardens yeah. of the moon, like, 
the moon okay. the moon spawn is the garden. Okay, the I got you. That makes sense. But I actually yeah. the reason I pause is like you saying that the rest of the world is the garden to the moon is I like that interpretation. Mm, interesting. That's that's the interpretation that I had, I guess. I don't know. Um I know. But yeah, I really like Moon Spawn. For the real uh, reason that apparently we all forgot about. So maybe we need to go re reread that section. Yeah, I don't remember that. I remember her telling us the story. I just don't remember it talking about Gardens of the Moon. You know what? So true, Nicholas. The gardens were the <laughs> friends we made along the way, and we made so many of them. Oh, uh, maybe this yeah. is an accidental spoiler. Maybe this didn't happen yet. No. Oh. oh no, this person's wrong. See, I'm just reading as it as it comes in. So okay. <laughs> you know, it's I, I do, the chat I do right remember, now is like a wild ride. <laughs> yeah. Um I do remember like story time with Sari and Crocus. You know, I I remember that part. I just don't remember the Gardens of the Moon stuff. But I believe you. Um I actually Gardens of the Moon, I actually really like as a title. Um, I know it has the of the like I get it, but I think Gardens of the Moon is a very interesting title. Yeah, I think so too. Um, I in like general, the, title the series has Dead great Hells. titles. Like, I, really, I think almost all of them are good. I don't like Midnight Tides that much, but other than that, I think I they have like really good Midnight titles. Tides. I might like it. Like, I don't dislike it. I'm just like Toll the Hounds. What a great name. The Bone Hunters. What a great name. The Crippled God. Dust of Dreams. Bone Hunters doesn't do much Gale. for me either. Neither does Dust of Dreams because it seems too much of like Knife of Dreams, but. Uh, the Crippled God. Now that's a name. Yeah. The Crippled God that's was mentioned in this book. Did you catch that? Yes. Yeah. Interesting. I did. Um, I, Matt, I, I did that did talk... where it's like, hey, I know that. Yeah. Uh, Matt, we did talk briefly about Anamander Rake's crazy sword, but not very much because uh, I was more focused on the fact that Bookborn does not like dragons. But yes, that core, that sword is super cool. Very cool. I am down for a fantasy sword. Don't yeah. don't let anyone say I'm not down for a fantasy sword. So, um, yeah. If you were to guess, just just based on nothing but your intuition, say we get to the end of this. It's June 2027 or whatever. And we read the crippled <laughs> god. <laughs> and which one of these? I better books not do you be think? on YouTube in June 2027. Oh, you will be. You'll it'll be a, you'll be a hologram. It'll be fine. <laughs> um, which one of these books do you think will be your favorite one? Just, mm. just based on nothing. Just like, just a guess. We can come back to it and see. We should, we, wait, I got to look up all the titles. I want us to rank them. Oh, I know right all the now. titles. Okay. Do you want me to tell you? Well, the I, mean, titles? I know all the titles, but I don't know what order they're in. So let me look them okay. up real quick. Just so I can see them. Mem so dead house case is next. The memories of ice. No, I don't uh, need you to house... tell me. I'm just going to look at them. Okay. Okay. I need to see I them. So to... I know that I haven't said okay. one more than once. So that's why I have to okay. just look at it. Okay. Okay, you're gonna go first. Give me an Are we order. ranking them? And then we can come back at the end and see how right we okay. were. Okay. All right, I'll go first because I, I remember them. So um let's see. I think my favorite one is gonna be the crippled god. I really like endings. Okay. Um my second favorite is gonna be bone hunters because I love me a convergence on top of my convergence. Okay. Uh third, memories of ice, because mm. I hear that one's dope. Fourth, okay. I'm going to put as Deadhouse Gates because I hear that Chains of Dogs are excellent. Fifth, I am going to put as Reaper's Gale because I know a lot of people really like Reaper's Gale and uh, it sounds cool, I guess. I don't know. Sixth, I'm going to put as uh, Midnight Tides because it's a whole new location and that'll be interesting. Seventh, I'm going to be putting as House of Chains because I don't know how I'm going to deal with all that stuff. Eighth, I'm going to put as Gardens of the Moon because I really like that book, but people say it's not one of the better ones. Ninth, I'm going to put as Dust of the Dreams because it's one half of a book, and theoretically that does not work as well for me. And tenth, I'm going to put Toll the Hounds because everybody seems to not like that one. So here's the interesting thing. You know so much more information than me. So like you <laughs> saying that just gave me a ton of information that I didn't oh, okay. previously have. So I feel like I should have gone first because okay. mine would be like I'm wild. sorry about that. Mine are going to be um, like based on nothing. The good news okay. I've already forgotten half of what you said. As you know, okay, that I sounds do good. That. Um, I'm going to put my number one as Dead House Gates. Um, okay. I just I just feel like that's going to be the one right. that I'm going to like the most. Um, and then I am going to put. I want to be like controversial um i'm gonna put i'm gonna put the crippled god 
because I also think that I'm very into endings. Mm -hmm. So I'll put the crippled God and then I'm going to put gardens of the moon because I have this weird feeling that I really like beginnings as well. And I often over okay. like the first book in a series. That's fair. Um, so I'm going to put gardens of the moon. Then I am going to put midnight tides because I like the title. Then I'm going to put, um, it's in retaliation to me slandering it. It's exactly right. It's going to be my number four. And then I am going to put, what have I forgot? Oh, Memories of Ice actually should be four. I'm going to put Memories of Ice as four. And then uh, Midnight Tides is five. And then um, I'm going to put The Bone Hunters because I don't know anything about it. Then Reaper's Gale because I don't know anything about it. Then, <laughs> then <laughs> I'm going to put have I already said Toll the Hounds? No. No, good. Okay. Then I'm going to put Toll the Hounds because I'm going to dislike it, but not quite as much as everybody else. Mm, okay. And then I'm going to I know House some people love Queen. it. I know Jimmy and Philip both really like it. So it's not like everybody. And then I'm going to put um, House of Chains for what you said. Like if there's going to be sketchy stuff in it, that's probably going to be a problem for me. And then Dust of Dreams last because canonically, I hate a split book. Yeah. I hate I hate a half book. I didn't know that about that, but I hate a half book. Yeah, so, so it was supposed to be one book, and um, it's like two thousand pages. So it was just the Ken Liu of the series. It was just like I guess well, this could. It, yeah, like, the Steve. Ken Liu one suffered from it. Um, Cytonic suffered from it. I know you Anytime haven't read this series. Somebody else probably. I think I remember somebody else telling you this, but the only time I've liked a split is in Sun Eater. I thought that added to the mm -hmm. to the story rather than detracted. But yeah, it doesn't work for me very much. I think I'm going to love Memories of Ice. Well, I put that as my number three. So, no, I put it as my number I four. I really like the name, Memories of Ice, and I really like the cover. This is the dopest cover. Oh, you already own uh, them do, all. Do you, have, do you have this one? Or do you just not oh, have yeah, it? Oh, yeah, I do, actually. I forgot because I had to get it on. I don't know where mine went, though. I had to get it on um, Thrift Books because Amazon doesn't have 1,200 pages, this bad boy. Um, if, if I hit the table... It moves the table. Um, I do have memories. Of, I'm only going to number three because I'm like, I'm at least going to read the three, but then I can give up after yeah. that because I don't have the fourth if I want to. Um, okay. It's after an hour and a half. Like I, I turn to a pumpkin when a live has been going. Why is that a phrase that people say? Are you just copying Joanna or is that an actual phrase? Turn into a pumpkin. You turn into a pumpkin at midnight in Cinderella. Oh, that makes sense. So, like, Joanna the joke said is, that like, the other day, and, I, and I, I, I was like, that's a weird phrase, but I'm just going to go no, with I it. I mean, and she doesn't turn into a pumpkin, but the carriage turns into a pumpkin. No, no I get what you mean okay. now. Okay, I got you. Um, No, I'm not stealing Joanna's phrase. I'm stealing Cinderella, the very, very common. <laughs> that's such a funny reference not to get. Um, the other day, sorry, re real quick, real quick. The other day I was talking about a story and I just said something to like a coworker and I was like, well, they, they just threw the baby out with the bathwater and they had never heard that before. And I had to explain why that was a phrase. And it was really weird. I was like, I mean, I've never explained this phrase before. So, so that's interesting I because I've said that phrase a lot. Is there like an origin of that phrase I should know? Or is it just like the simple like? No, like literally I was just like, well, if you're throwing out bathwater and you're giving a baby a bath, you don't want to. You know, yeah, okay. you don't want to throw out the baby. I thought you were going like, to like the no, no, literally just the most basic. Like they did, they didn't understand why that was a phrase, and I had to explain it to them. Um, that's funny. That's a comment. Well, that's like um, which British person got upset with "It's not up my alley"? Who got upset about that? I can't oh, remember I now. This. Yeah, because apparently over in the UK, it's it's not up my street. Like, and she had said that, like, it's not up my street. And I was like, what do you mean not up your street? It's not up your alley. She's like, ew, who says alley? And I was like, everyone in America. Anyway, I don't know who that was, though. Oh, what booktuber was that? I Listen, see her I face. I just want to say real quick, Gavin, we're just going to talk about random crap for two minutes. So you can go to bed. Thank you so much for, sh for showing up. Oh, yeah. Gavin, thank you so much for coming. You should go back to sleep. We are not talking about anything anymore. This is why the live needs to end. Yeah. <laughs> um, only Jimmy. I don't turn into a pumpkin on chatting with nuts in case he's still watching. I'll do, I'll what do is, a three so hour chatting with nuts. What is, nuts what is it with me that I, I just, I don't stop the pumpkin turning. It's not you. It's everybody else. Mm. Um, 
It's everybody I else. See. And when you're on my channel, I get to control it so I can be like, I'm done. Ah, so Deadhouse Gates, we're going for three hours. You guys heard it here first. Bookborn has too much social anxiety to suggest that we end early when I'm the host. Just kidding. We'll keep it to the same line. So that is true. But at this point, I think we are good enough friends that I'd be like in the private chat, Kyle, I'm, I need to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Turn this off. <laughs> like, that's the problem. You should have kept me more at an arm's distance because then I would have been too nervous to say anything. But now it's too late. Yeah. Um, Didn't think ahead. Gardens of the Moon was great. Very excited for the rest of uh, Malazan. I just hate that. Um, very excited for Dead House Gates. Uh, my expectation in one sentence is I think I'm going to love Dead House Gates. <laughs> I'm like just convinced I think I'm going to love it. Um, Jordan, I don't think is here anymore. And Alex, uh, tall guy, you know, 6'8", six, yeah. six, Alex. Um, not just for everybody else. I say Alex all the time to Bookboard, and she always thinks I mean uh, Alex Neves. And I have to be like, no, tall Alex. Anyway, they're they're like into Deadhouse Gates right now. And they were like literally messaging me today saying how much they're liking it. And I usually agree okay. with both of them. So I think I'm going to really like it. Cool. I am. I'm very excited. So that will we'll read it during March. Have the live show sometime in April on yeah. your channel with a guest Indeed. that you sent me a while ago. And I don't remember which guest. You uh, well, I won't say it here just because I haven't official. I have reached yeah. out to them, but I haven't officially booked them for like this one. Yeah, yeah. Don't say it. But I, it'll be. We want to. We want to get different people for books that they like and they want to talk about. So I, we've talked to a couple people about appearing, uh, and it's more about who wants to appear for each book. That kind of thing. Yeah. So we're hoping this will probably be, well, we're hoping this is the only one with just us two. We want yeah. to invite guests on um, for the other ones. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It should be fun. Okay. Thanks right. everyone night, for everybody. joining and being so active in the chat. That's exactly what I wanted. So thank you guys. And uh, yeah, we'll see you at Dead House Gates. Yeah. Exciting. Bye, Bye everybody. Now it's going to take forever to end. <laughs>